Well, President Trump's evolving foreign policy has raised concerns around the world, but Saudi Arabia's foreign minister says he's very optimistic about working with the new administration. We see a president who's pragmatic and practical, a businessman, problem solver, a man who's not an ideologue. We see a man who has a certain view of the world. He wants America to play a role in the world. We're joined now by Nader Hashmi, director of the Center for Middle East Studies at the University of Denver. He's joining us via Skype uh, from Denver. Very good to have you with us on Al Jazeera, as always, Mr. Hashmi. What did you make of the Saudi foreign minister's very warm comments about Donald Trump and about the new administration? Well, actually, they reminded me of um, Benjamin Netanyahu's uh, remarks the other day in Washington, D.C. Um, many of the heads of state and leaders of um, major Middle East countries, Saudi Arabia and Israel in particular, are elated that uh, the arrival of Donald Trump um, is effectively a dream come true. They have a president now who is willing to um, um, see the world through their um, political uh, perspective, from their political perspective. And particularly, I think they're really hoping that um, the Saudi foreign minister, the Saudi government, and Israel in particular are hoping that Donald Trump will do what um, they had long hoped the United States would do, and that would play, and that would be to put the pressure on Iran to really sort of confront Iran's position in the region. And everything that we've heard from the Trump administration, particularly among his close foreign policy advisors, that is exactly the plan. So I think that explains the elation that we're hearing from the Saudi and Israeli governments at this moment. Both uh, governments had incredibly harsh words about Iran. So do you think Saudi Arabia, at least, has been emboldened by the this U.S. administration that is so much more critical of Iran than the last one was? Well, absolutely. I mean, if you recall um, those people who were following this story, when the WikiLeaks documents were first revealed um, um, several years ago, it was um, revealed that the Saudi government was secretly pushing the United States um, under President Bush to, um, to militarily um, strike Iran. Um, and to attack it um, and to cut off the head of the snake was the um, famous statement. And so now they're actually hoping that this is going to come true under Donald Trump. Um, uh, the, the former national security advisor who just stepped down, Michael Flynn, uh, the current um, um, defense secretary, um, James Mattis, all of them have um, you know, stated that they want to sort of challenge Iran's position. And that's a perfect alignment with what uh, the Saudis have been arguing for a very long time. And I think they're just waiting to see um, um, the Trump administration get its foreign policy act in order and then to sort of actually act out on this policy. So I think that explains um, the statements that we're hearing right now in Munich and in, and in other places. And what about the reaction to Trump's policy, whatever that might be, on Palestine, Israel? Are the al Jaber's comments that the new administration made him optimistic that the conflict could be resolved? Do you think he has reason to be optimistic? Do we even know how Trump is going to affect the conflict yet? Well, um, yeah, I think we do know um, what Trump is planning. I mean, he was pretty explicit in his comments the other day at his press conference with uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, is that he, you know, basically, um, you know, does not want to support a two-state settlement. Um, whatever the two parties um, will agree upon is what Donald Trump will agree upon, which effectively gives Israel veto power over the, the course of the negotiations. Um, you know, effectively, the Palestinians under Trump's vision will get absolutely nothing. And this is a, a solidly rightward shift, although trying to make it claim that, um, you know, if Netanyahu slows down the settlements, it will be much easier for the United States to deal with the rest of the world. So there's going to be, I think, an attempt to, um, you know, shift U.S. policy toward Israel, much further than it already has been. And I think what's going to happen is there's going to be no serious movement toward a just resolution of Israel-Palestine. You're simply going to see what we have been seeing for a very long time, a massive expansion of Israeli settlements and colonial outposts throughout just, the West Bank over the course of the next Just lastly and, and, and quickly, if we can, Mr. Hashmi, why would Saudi Arabia support that policy? Well, I don't think they're explicitly happy about that policy. I think they're much more thrilled about, um, you know, the Iran aspect of Trump's um, statements and his presidency. They're really hoping that that's going to sort of um, be the focus. Um, and I think they're just showing uh, on Israel-Palestine, they're simply trying to give the president of the United States the benefit of the doubt. Um, I don't think the Saudis really care significantly about Palestinian suffering. They are currently um, deeply concerned and, if not obsessed with Iran's role in the region, partly legitimate but partly exaggerated.
executive at the same time. Now that Hashmi, Director of the Centre for Middle East Studies at the University of Denver, always great to have you with us. Thank you for your time.